two pieces of advice for you. One, if there's nothing, oh, sorry, over here, there's nothing there. That means it was first posted here. Second piece of advice, use the timestamps in the description. It's the best way to course through this video. If you don't feel like um, watching the entry featured on the thumbnail, you can always try the other entries, which are in the timestamps. Remember, timestamps in the description. Welcome to the diaries. There was a lesson to me actually in anything, even in cartoons. Okay. This will be the final time, probably the final time I'll be using Salomon Greats in in the tournament because I'll be anticipating the uh, the April one rule changes. Where in, well, you can summon from the you can summon from the extra deck from to any monster zone actually. Pero, links and face up pendulums will still be restricted to the extra monster zone. Sila dalawa lang. Tingin ko, uh, links won't be, uh, won't be that relevant after April 1, okay? This is my uh, sort of forecast. Now, it leads me to a light lesson. Which I learned from my mentor, Pedro Aguilar. It's called, uh, well, it's called uh, Letting Go. Right. <clears throat> so after probably this tournament, after, yeah, after this tournament, I'll be uh, glad to let go of my Salomon Great Corna in order for other players to in order for other players to use it okay and of course i can get my money back <laughs> all right i'm also in the best i'm also in the uh business of flipping Yu -Gi -Oh cards because of this because hey, remember, you've been competing with a core for so long it gradually builds up gradually builds up the value if it, if it competes right if it competes okay? it actually builds the value up so by the time you let it go, you can ask it for a, well for a good price. What I learned from what I learned from the guy is if it's stressful, if it's no longer uh, what you call this, if it no basically if it no longer serves your best interest or it doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you happy anymore. Just let it go. You have to learn to let go of things. Now, I learned from that because uh, that's why I'm. That's why I got active into Yu-Gi-Oh because I had to. It, it helped me. Helped me let go of a stressful relationship. Okay. And well, um, it also helped me. Uh, let go of the fact that my my dad is gone. Uh, my dad passed away in 2015. I was still I wasn't active on Yu-Gi-Oh then because well, I was the one who was in the hospital. You have to you have to learn to let go of things. Most especially if they if they don't serve your best interest anymore, or if it doesn't make you happy. Okay. Never do it for the money or for anything trivial or for anything, well, worldly, so to speak. Okay, now you have to, you gotta learn to let go of anything that doesn't serve your best interest or it doesn't make you happy. Like Gary Vaynerchuk said, if it doesn't make you happy, and you keep on doing it, well, doesn't exactly say it, but he is uh, advocating it, so to speak. If it doesn't make you happy, why hold on to it? 
All right. Basically, learn to let go of the things that either don't serve your best interests or doesn't basically it doesn't make you happy anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I just um, remembered this. Uh, Called this, this Facebook friend of mine, and uh, I was asking if she was uh, following my following any of my accounts, especially my YouTube channel. She said, uh, I think she probably said to the effect of, "No, I'm uh, I'm exclusively on Facebook." And here's and here's the thing. That girl is a cosplayer. <laughs> that girl is a cosplayer. Now I thought, you're a cosplayer, and the only platform you have is Facebook. I didn't ask. I didn't ask why. All right. So I zip my mouth. Okay. Now, what am I driving at? If you're trying to get your get your point across, if you're trying to get your brand out there, if you're trying to get some fans, if you're a cosplayer, why stay in Facebook? Why Facebook lang? Not all the net is Facebook. Matter of fact, okay, I've been I've been telling you all this since um, since mid 2018 or mid mid or late 2018 Facebook is done Facebook is over the hill okay. it has outlived its usefulness it has made it's already made its money from its ads so your content will be buried your content will be buried there amongst all amongst all the users right well, I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't have a Facebook account okay but you should only treat it as a last resort okay? you should treat it as the last platform you'll ever be active on oh right the only time I am most active I am very active on Facebook is Saturday that's the only day if you see any post from me on my Facebook page it'll be from other platforms because I feel okay I am uh, I feel that Facebook has outlived its usefulness okay? I'm I'm saying it again Facebook has outlived its usefulness. So if you're a brand trying to get get yourself out there, trying to get your content out there, why stick to Facebook? Why only be exclusive to Facebook? There are other plat there are other there are better platforms out there. Right now there's LinkedIn. Even cosplayers can uh, can utilize LinkedIn. TikTok. Right? TikTok. It's a good place for cosplayers. YouTube, of course. Okay. I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching a Gary V video right now. So I'm just listening to it while I while I do this entry. So I repeat, not all the net is Facebook. <clears throat> I just uh, went down memory lane at uh, well. Got when it, it uh, my mind drifted back to the time when Miley Cyrus rebranded herself. All right, you, you guys remember that? She twerked. She twerked during the MTV Music Awards. It put it resulted in a probably one of the most boring Instagram posts of all time. Okay. <clears throat> um, for me, nakikisa kay lang siya noon sa sa pagri-rebrand ni Taylor Swift okay 
As you know, Taylor Swift was a country artist before she became a pop superstar. Okay. But Taylor Swift's rebranding was one of the most uh, successful in recent memory. All right. From being a, a Grammy Award winning country artist to winning another Grammy for a pop album in 1989. That was album of the year. It's a Taylor Swift album. Well, it came kasi to a point in Taylor's career that I think I, I think she felt she felt that country was on the decline again. All right, so she had to uh, she had to rebrand herself as a as a pop superstar, and it is very successful. All right, it was very successful. Another case. Uh, Lady Gaga. We all know who Lady Gaga is. Okay, she is a techno pop icon, and she somewhat rebranded herself into a pop rock icon, and it was a success. Okay, with that she had movie deals, the Stars Born. Anybody watch the Stars Born? She was great in that movie, and the music, of course. The music was. Up to now, we still have. Up to now, I still haven't secured a copy of that soundtrack, okay? But I am planning to. Now, <clears throat> and the greatest, uh, the greatest rebranding story of them all, Madonna, right? There is a reason why she's, why she's called the queen of reinvention. Because she's very good at rebranding herself. She's very good at that. That's why up to now, she still sells, she still packs stadiums, uh, around the world and well she's also a rock and roll hall of famer now okay what am i driving at you know branding yourself is a requirement but rebranding yourself can also be done sometimes half the time it's necessary okay <clears throat> because what worked what worked today may not work next year or even five years from now or even ten years from now so if it doesn't work anymore if it doesn't uh, if it if it doesn't keep you if it doesn't keep you motivated you gotta rebrand you got to rebrand yourself right? that's the only exception but hey having Having to rebrand yourself all the time, it's much better than having no brand. Okay? It's much better than having no brand because no one's going to no one's going to recognize you in your niche or in your industry. Okay. So the three artists I mentioned, those are the three best case studies when it comes to rebranding. When it comes to rebranding rebranding oneself. Madonna, Lady Gaga, and Taylor Swift. Right? Those are the three biggest, uh, the three biggest rebranding stories in, well, probably the music in the, the history of music, right? You don't change with times. The times will change you, and I'm sure you don't want that to happen. Very special announcement for you. I'm currently watching. Brian Tracy's latest video. Let me show you. On my YouTube channel, one million subscribers. See that, guys? Let me pause it for a bit. <clears throat> the great Brian Tracy has just reached one million subscribers on YouTube. You want to know why? Because the content that he puts out in his YouTube channel is worth more than gold. Okay. <clears throat> I've been following Brian Tracy ever since I started my uh, ever since I started my selling career. All right. No one started also never marketing. I didn't know I didn't know the guy. I didn't know him. But when I got to um, to read his uh, what you call this, read some of his articles uh, across uh, see across sales newsletters and publications, and listening to his audio, I said. I told myself, I gotta follow this fellow. All right, I got to follow this fellow. 
Now, fast forward to 2020. He's got 1 million subscribers now on YouTube. First of all, well, before I continue this, congratulations. Uh, congratulations, sir, on having 1 plus million subscribers. You deserve it. Okay? You deserve it, Brian Tracy. You deserve it. Now, <clears throat> what I learned from the great Brian Tracy is this. You have to know your customers' needs and you should use these primarily. These two things, these two things on your head, you have to use, that is your number one tool in closing a sale. Now, from those principles of this came, uh, came terms like uh, pain points, uh, stories, okay? <clears throat> and okay, Brian Tracy doesn't specialize doesn't just specialize in uh, sales techniques. He's also into pro productivity, personal development, and public speaking. Those three P, the, his three P's, the three P's of his brand, which has stood the test of time for more than I think five decades or so. Up to now, they're still it's they're still being used. All right, they are still being used. That means it is still freaking relevant. It's still freaking relevant, especially to those uh, to those people who are get, or, who are still new to sales. I strongly recommend that you follow Brian Tracy, right? You mga you mga sales gurus ngayon. Most of their principles came from this guy, right? Most of the principles came from this guy. So I strongly suggest you follow Brian Tracy in any way you can. YouTube, I think he has an Instagram. I think he also has an Instagram account. <clears throat> Get his books, right? Actually, he's, uh, he, has a, he has a 1 million subscribers giveaway promo right now. I just joined. <laughs> I just joined. I want his book, Million Dollar Habits, because I couldn't find it anywhere here in the Philippines. All right? It's not, it's not exactly available here. So I want that. <laughs> so that's how I see. That's how I learned from the great Brian Tracy. Right? You got to use this if you want to close a sale. You have to always keep the customer's needs in mind and right? And do not well, for me, okay? The number one thing I learned do not oversell. Okay? All you have to, that's all you need to that's all you need just to close the sale. The customer's needs and you just listen for any pain points. That's what I learned from the great Brian Tracy. I just had lunch over here at uh, Tito Pax SM well, before before this, I got wind from Gary Vaynerchuk's Instagram that um, probably one of the one of the greatest thought leaders who uh, who ever lived, and probably one of the one of the greatest CEOs of the past century has passed away. His name is Jack Welch, right? The former CEO of General Electric. Right? He was CEO of General Electric from. 81 to 2001, 30 years, okay? He served the company for 30 years. And through his leadership, it became, well, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the most recognizable brands right now. Mind you, that's General Electric, okay? GE. The company founded by Thomas Edison, which was eventually acquired by J.P. Morgan, right? So, yeah, you got three, three of the, three of the best, thought leaders in history running that company, uh, founded and run, ran that company. Now, let's go back to Jack Welch. <clears throat> I'm deeply saddened, okay? When it comes to um, leadership, productivity, and high performance, you can learn a lot from the guy, okay? His last two books, Winning and Winning the Answers, are good examples of this. Okay, I'm, well, <clears throat> it's one of my goals to, to buy a copy of Winning, right? 
which he co-wrote with his uh, with his uh, with his widow Susie. And I can learn a lot when it comes to leadership. I can I can learn a lot from that book. Okay. Now, here's one thing about Jack Welch that he shares with Dan Pena. They both believe in the fact that there's no such thing as work-life balance. All right. There's no such thing. Why? I probably explained this in uh, probably yeah in my most re in the ro the most recent episode of the fo of oh, Diaries. <laughs> Sorry, Advocacy Friday, and of course the blog post that inspired it. But I'm going to well we're going to talk about that again right here. <clears throat> Why is there why is there aren't such a thing as work life balance? Well, basically, you make your choices. Then you have to be you have to deal with the consequences of your choices. That's life. That that's how life works. Right? That's accountability. Okay? If you make if you're able to make a ch make any choice and be ready to deal with the consequences that's accountability right that is the foundation of accountability that's what you can learn from guys like jack welch dan Pena, and other other thought leaders who are who subscribe to the fact that there is no such thing as work-life balance right if you accept this fact then you're on the way to learning how accountability works again you make the choices you deal with the consequences that's what I learned from Dan Pena and Jack Welch if there's anything on this planet who knows the art the subtle art of not giving a fuck it's none other than our pets Take my dog, for instance. He knows how not to give a fuck. The only time he's going to complain is when he's not being fed. Whereas humans, they complain a fucking lot. Right? They complain everything from not getting enough views on their social media to, well, uh, to their girlfriend or boyfriend not texting them. Really mundane, uh, really mundane as hell things. Pets, like I said before, they only complain when they're hungry. When was the last time you complained when you hung when you're hungry? From Instagram, I saw this. Um, what's it called this? I saw this ad. <clears throat> That says, oh, that asks a question. Ask us how. You know what? Um, for me, ask me how is probably the most generic network marketing question out there. All right. The most generic question any network marketer would, uh, would think of. It's okay to um, to offer the business first, all right. Never marketing affords us that. But come on, <laughs> ask me how you could do better than that. <laughs> For me, um, someone is telling you to ask them how means only one thing: they don't have their own personal brand. They are not bringing value to the marketplace, right? How can you attract value downlines, value signups, if you're not offering anything for free to the marketplace? You get what I'm saying? You get what, you get what I'm saying, Reddit? Now, here's my uh, sort of advice okay? this is free advice for everyone on reddit if someone tells you to ask them how 
Don't pay attention. Right? They are generic network marketers. You do not want to join a generic network marketer. Because well, I'm sure you're not you're not that type of person. You want to have your own identity in your business. Right? When so again, when someone tells you to ask them how swipe up scroll up and don't pay attention to them all right first step that's the first step you can do in due diligence when it comes to network marketing an hour ago Facebook restricted me from accessing my account just because I shared a post that I a post that I did on that same platform and shared it within that same platform. And now I'm paying for it. Up to now, they've yet to send me a login code so that I can so I can completely log back in. It's been an hour. Nothing. Right? Nada. So what I did, as a response, I uninstalled both FB and Messenger from my phone, from this phone. Well, for one thing, I am not going to waste my time trying to log back into Facebook. I got other socials to, I got other socials to to mind. Right, Facebook has become irrelevant anyway. Right, they've outlived their. I've been telling I've been telling the entire tube verse like this one they have outlived their usefulness and well it's not feasible anymore to promote any kind of business at least for at least for the small guys like me so why waste your time with Facebook right why waste your time with Facebook when there are other socials that are better than it so we'll wait and see. It's already the second day of March. And well, through Idbulaga, I found out that it's Women's Month. Okay. <clears throat> Over the decades, uh, women have played important roles in society, all right, especially in uh, politics sports okay even in the field of personal development okay now i believe that women women's month isn't for isn't for women but for also the men who believed in them all right they wouldn't women wouldn't empower themselves if there aren't uh if there aren't any uh, what you call this any any people around them to help them empower help them empower uh, their field especially the men all right now if you're if you're a guy okay like me if, if you're uh, if your mother your sister your daughter your girlfriend your wife is totally into something as long as it's as long as it's legal and positive in nature right support them right root for them uh even well even offer your services for free okay right for example um if you're uh if you're a guy okay? for example if you're a guy and your girlfriend is a cosplayer and she has a uh, and because of that she got brand deals she got uh, oh product endorsements she became for example she became an actress a movie star a TV star if you truly love the girl you gotta support her there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with cosplay there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with that right you have to support her Okay? It's what's making her money. It's what it's her passion. Alright. It's well 
it's what's making her an empowered woman. Right? For me, okay? Supporting the women in your life makes you a real man. Okay? That makes you a real man. So, Women's Month isn't for women. Uh, is it just for women? It's also for the men supporting them. 